uh, he has portrayed Robert uh, uh, as a sympathetic figure. Okay, that in the film, that fi that sympathy doesn't come across that um, assertively. Okay, so the filmmaker is not that assertive or that uh, uh, strong about uh, uh, sympathize, uh, sympathizing with Roberta's character. Okay, so as we have been talking about it, sir, the nature of the film is slightly different. All right. Um, however, uh, yes, Dreiser did try to uh, portray the uh, um, uh, Roberta's character in sympathetic tones, but at the same time he is also cautioning many young women like her that this is the fate you meet, but at the same time it is also pointing a finger towards a society which leads people into, I mean why force young people, again I am coming back to the same question that I had earlier started with, why force people who are no longer in love with each other, this is the social setup that he is revolting against, that he is protesting against. Okay. So, it is not the, uh, Roberta is not the only one, you see you have seen several such females through the course of the novel. Okay. Many women are discussed in the same light and they know, we are told that society has no sympathy for women like this. Okay. And he actually interrogates the kind of social system that exists that puts young people into such kind of a predicament. Why can't they give in to their basic instincts okay, without getting so severely punished for it? That is the moral question here. Moral question is not whether Clyde Griffiths was right or wrong about turning down Roberta. Are we clear here now about these things? Okay. At one point, if you have read the novel so far, um, I do not know exactly which chapter it is, but um, we are told that uh, Clyde and Sandra and a bunch of their friends, they are taking a ride journey through the countryside and uh, at some point they, um, they are confused about which way or route to take and there is a place called uh, Blythe. Yeah, and uh, this uh, the, this young man is uh, urged by all his friends that go down, step out of the car, and ask for directions from this particular farm. Okay, from whoever owns this farmhouse. And uh, yes, what's her complete name? Alden. Yes, the Alden. Yeah, so Titus Alden, that is uh, Roberta's father, and there is a card or a name card written somewhere placed outside the farmhouse and it is in a dilapidated condition. It is in a state, it is a, it's like dirt poor people, he is not too sure whether this farm actually yields anything even for their sustenance. And then have you come across that passage? Not yet? It is in chapter 40. It is in chapter 40, 40. Okay. Can you give me the exact page please? 443. Okay, the name of the place is Blitz, not Blind. He looks at the farm. Okay, the, uh, and the unpainted dilapidated outbuildings all the more dreary because of these others. To think this was Roberta's home and to think in the face of all that he, he now aspired to in connection with Sandra and this social group at Lycagus. Are you there? Are you there? Have you found that a particular uh, point. This was Roberta's home and uh, to think in the face of all that he now aspired to in connection with Sandra and this social group at Lycagus. She should be demanding that marry her, that he marry her. How horrifying, how outrageous, how inconsiderate of Roberta to even dare and dream to 
marry a person to demand marry uh, to demand to marry someone like me because there what, where is the comparison and I who is absolutely on his way up the ladder okay he is an out and out social climber okay and he while he is on his way to this so see th these are all the things so Dreiser keeps on giving you all these clues and most importantly when he talks about what is the uh, final idea what is the final incident that plants that root the idea of uh, um, murdering Roberta the newspaper item see this is a society where these things happen on a regular basis what is the new newspaper item a man and a young girl they took a boat ride and the woman's body is found the man's hasn't been yet found okay so people get away with it that's what he is he comes under them you see we see so many crimes all around our society and the newspapers highlight and present all the gory details what would you know, uh, uh, now put all these items from your modern mind's perspective what would a criminal think about well, how what 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 is the uh, what are these news items and all the reports that a criminal minded person would read come across what what's the impression that's he going to get Well, we come across all these news. It's very easy to get away, provided that you don't lead or don't leave any clues behind. Okay, and now, uh, 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 a morally upright person anyway wouldn't even think of doing any such com uh, or committing any such crime. That's go that goes beyond. But a person, we are now talking about the criminal minded and we are not see in Dreiser things are very clear if you are educated education is important in Dreiser have you come across that not money ok for Dreiser is very clear that and repeatedly he talks about Clyde Griffith and his semi informed or semi formed mind so that means education for Dreiser is the only way up you educate young people and perhaps you can address several ills of the society that's his that's his standing but now we know that also is not all that much true because educated people find more devious ways of getting out of or finding their ways around the law that is also a fact okay so as long as there is society there are crimes this is something that we have to accept in reason there could be some solution he raises lots of questions and it is a deeply deeply psychological study ok because so, so many things and at point did you see how he anticipates stream of consciousness yeah there are several instances in the novel X, particularly book to end towards the end of uh, the book 2 ok and beginning of book 3 so many things that happen just in his mind what if how will and s s you know fragmented questions they start and look at the way all these things uh, must have uh, anticipated the so called stream of consciousness novel. I do not know if you have paid attention to that alright uh, again in the same line and Sandra in the car with him here to see if not know the poverty the reduce and all these exclamation marks now the other day we were talking about the poverty the reduced grimness of it all how far he had traveled away from just such a beginning as this the exclamation marks throughout in the latter part of book 2 the two women are constantly did they ever come across face to face no they never a moment where these women even come across and I know Roberta is aware of her Sandra like everyone else she is today what we call a page 3 person yeah society girl has sus some suspicions yeah and Bertin Lied to her the first time, 
she noted that Sondra's name wasn't mentioned. Hmm. It's always been Sondra. So, it's a, a woman's intuition perhaps. Okay, so, it is always there, but um, coming back to this question that uh, Sondra in the novel is presented as a typical social butterfly, okay, with all her grand uh, proclamations of grand love for Clyde, she is after all uh, what we as I have just spoken talked about page 3 person. Okay. So, she likes to be seen around and the way she arranges the picnic, the way she ar arranges her uh, outings and all and Clyde is exactly the kind of man who would fall for such kind of lifestyle. So, therefore, exclamation is like emphasis when we use exclamation marks, we are actually what, what are exclamation marks used for in grammar? Not the surprise. Emotion, yeah, so emotions, deep kinds of emotion and Roberta's beauty and wealth as contrasted to the dreariness, grimness of Roberta's, I am sorry, Sandra's beauty and wealth as contrasted with Roberta's uh, pathetic life and her gr the grimness of her parents' lives, okay. They are contrasted and therefore, the use of exclamation, so exclamation marks just do not occur because he has nothing else to use. Okay. It is like he is horrified. Okay. In perhaps in many minds, many of us would not get so horrified and repulsed by poverty. Now, this is also a question, what kind of a man would be so horrified and repulsed and revolted by mere sight of poverty? I had the same kind of feeling. Yes. Like he was in the same. He is trying to get away from all this all his life. Okay, so he didn't try. He didn't come from wherever he has. Uh, he had come to get go back to these kinds of yeah. It wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad. Yes, you have to understand again. This was. It wasn't as bad. But through his distorted perception, it appears. <laughs> absolutely ugly, revolting, contrasting with? No, because he did not, maybe he did not realize that people could be poorer than what he had been. Yes. And this is, so I think that is what is making it even more ugly. Yes. So, the, the very fact that, uh, and also the fact of uh, Sandra being at his side all the time, he does not want her to see. Late at a later stage, when I do not know if you have even touched book 3, book 3 part of the novel, but when we reach book the third part of the book, there is one aspect of his life which he does not want Sandra to know at all. What is that aspect? Childhood. Childhood, but what? That he was sent out in the streets singing for the missionary. That is a that is a fact that shames him, he is ashamed of his upbringing. Okay. Again, it is not all that, it can, cannot be all that bad. Okay. After all, it is just a missionary work that his parents did. They were not like robbers or <laughs> liquor barons and all, but he is ashamed of not just that, but also the deeply spiritual, religious upbringing that he had been. So, again that is Dreiser's own revolt against his own upbringing. He himself was put through, he came from a deeply moral religious kind of a background and he hated, he grew up hating all kinds of religious people. Okay, so, much of what you see in Clyde Griffith of course, is based on a true life story, you know that. Chester Gillette case. So, that is a, a true case, but at the same time much of what you find in Clyde Griffith's character is something that uh, Dreiser himself had been through. Okay. Uh, I am on chapter 43 now. Chapter 43, those who have my version of the book is page 464, 
page 464. Now look at this one, uh, at the brook shores again that evening, a smart company of friends of Sondra's, Bertins and others. On the dance floor, uh, a re-encounter with uh, Sondra, all smiles, for she was pretending for the benefit of others here, her mother and father in particular, that she had not seen Clyde before, did not even know that he was here. Okay? So, like a typical young girl who is trying to hide her little flirtations and dalliance with a young man who she knows her family does not and would not accept, approve of. Yeah. So, she is, she is the one who enticed him to come to, uh, to this uh, countryside, to uh, this particular place. But uh, in front of her, yeah, and she also plotted, she is smart enough to plot that uh, no one should know from her immediate family that she is the one who invited Clyde to this place, while they are all having this family and social picnic of sorts. Now, and then she encourages Clyde to stay with her friends, not uh, with her family. And when she comes across this, when this, uh, there is a social e uh, gathering in the, e the evening party, she dances with him and acts as if this is the first time she has been meeting and uh, she is so surprised to see him here. Now, you should uh, consider her and uh, if you put her against or place her alongside Roberta, okay, what sort of differences would you find? Uh, Roberta really, uh, was very hesitant uh, at Clyde's advances. She does not make any moves on him, he does all the work. On the other hand, in uh, this particular case, Sandra makes all the moves on her. Yeah. So, perhaps that also uh, presents her as a very glamorous and uh, adventurous kind of a spirit. But that, then again, uh, Dreiser tells us that is the social situation, that is the social circumstance. A girl like Sandra can pick and drop any guy she wants and get away with it. Whereas, a girl like Roberta, she will be very careful and very cautious to with men especially. Okay? So, if a girl like this who has been so careful about her chastity, her moral, morality, the kind of upbringing she had okay? and if she is wooed the way she has, she was being wooed by someone like Clyde Griffiths who for whom he is like uh, what Sandra is to Clyde. Yeah way up there. She was bound to give in. Okay, so, it is nothing. So, again all these questions. Yeah. She also at one point pretends because she moves out from one family to another. She is, yeah, she is placed with a very uh, nice family of fr uh, family friend kind of people. Yes, yeah, but because on uh, at the urgings of Clyde, she shifts and starts uh, living on her own, so that he can go and come in, go out when, as and when he pleased. Okay. So, this is also a part, but then girls of this class cannot get away with these things, uh, girls like Sandra can. Okay. At, uh, in book 3, uh, so many of, in, so there are several instances where uh, Dreiser keeps on harping on this, a girl like so Roberta could not get away with it. A girl like Sandra, she will always be protected and he, so the sermonizing the preachy tone of Dreiser at work there. Same page, page 464, Sandra so glad Clyde here misses him so much. She smoothed uh, um, his hair as he kissed her and Clyde Bethinking him of the shadow which lay so darkly between them, crushed her feverishly, uh, desperately. Oh, my darling baby girl. This is how he uh, addresses her several times. Na? Baby girl. He exclaimed, my beautiful, beautiful Sandra, if you only knew how much I love you, if you only knew, I wish I could tell you all. I wish I could. But he could not now or ever. He would never dare to speak to her of even so much as a phase of the black barrier that now lay between them, 
for with her training the standards of love and marriage that had been set for her she would never understand never be willing to make so great a sacrifice for love as much as she loved him and he would be left abandoned on the instant and with what horror in her eyes okay now he talks he is absolutely looking at uh, sondra her beauty her wealth and her training the standards of love and marriage that had been set for her what about the standards of love and marriage that were set for roberta does he ever stop to think of that okay so again yes worried about how he abandoned uh, roberta okay so this is again a very class kind of a thing it has got nothing to do with anything else it is just about one class of girl and another class of girl how she should be treated how she with other i can do whatever i want okay um now i am looking at the end of uh, chapter 43 the so called stream of consciousness technique at least what the way um dreiser anticipates end of chapter 43 and yet sondra flattered as she was by this hunger and reciprocating it in part at which hunger is it what kind of hunger what has just gone on between them sondra has been suggesting all this while that once she comes of age they will elope right okay now at this point because uh, robert is still alive yeah robert uh, he hasn't yet uh, uh, they haven't yet met with that fatal accident now what is um, clyde's only way out amidst this circumstance amidst the situation that if robert uh, if sondra decides to elope with or agrees to elope with him now even then his future will be safe yeah why does sondra refuse one for one she is still an uh, not an adult or ma- she is still not a major okay. her uh, one of her fears is that her mother is, is uh, her parents are strong enough to dissolve the marriage okay so the practical side of sondra comes out and she refuses she says what's the hurry 3 or 4 months that's all it takes and that's the end clyde knows deep down that this is the end of his dream because sooner or later if roberta is not killed she will come out and expose her yeah he will be compelled to marry roberta and then look at this clyde quite numb because of his defeat yet unable to forego or deny the delight of being with her now did his best to recover his mood and think 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 that in some way somehow maybe via that plan of that boat now which is that plan drowning her or in some other way but what other way and now this is the turmoil that he is going through but no 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 not that he was not a murderer and never could be he was not a murderer never 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 don't you think it sort of echoes james joyce virginia woolf these ellipses yeah these dashes all these incomplete the fragmented thoughts all these are like so when we credit so much so these are also modernists in their own right they may be social realists i mean we all know modernism what i keep on repeating myself in every class what was modernism as a movement a reaction against good yeah but uh and we call strictly speaking he is a social realist right but then also see the the winds of changes are already visible in him also in these novels also and yet this loss this impending disaster this impending disaster how to avoid that and win to sondra after all how 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 yes okay so so much and through these fragmented sentences through these variety of punctuation marks exclamation question mark 
dashes, ellipses, these are all like we are shown a, you know, given a window to what is happening, the turmoil, the dilemma that Clyde Griffiths is facing. Okay. Now, coming back to all these, now I would like to wind up the novel first because today I wanted to finish it. Let us start talking about book 3 against the backdrop of I want to just wrap it up and let us look at all these points. If you would like to comment on anything here, go to chapter 46. I will talk about, I put that question mark there, nature and a question mark. Do you see over there? An American tra tragedy and nature. Chapter 46. Now, look at all these brackets and italics. Do you come across these? Page 494, brackets and italics. Hmm? Why was that old man in that old brown winter suit and hat and carrying that bird cage in a brown paper look it, looking at him so? Could he sense anything? Did he know him? Had he ever worked in Lycagus or seen him before? Do you see that? Okay. Now, this old man is not going to play any part in the story. It is not even like those three men he runs into once Roberta dies, once Roberta is drowned and she is dead and Clyde is certain that Roberta is dead and he is running away, you know, frantically and then he bumps into these three people, two old men and a youngish man and they raise the lantern and look at his face, well, very extremely melodramatic situation. Okay. And those three men play a key role in his trial. Are you aware of, uh, do you remember that? Three men, but this man who he bumps into at the station, he has nothing, but why? And why brackets, why italics? Stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness. Again, yes, and now this you know, the, the feeling of paranoia. Yes, although uh, Roberta's death or Roberta's accident is still to take place. Yeah, but because he is in a mental anguish, all these things. So, everyone is a suspect, everyone is an enemy. So, we have been talking about naturalism, one of the features, paranoia, yeah. anxiety, distrust of human beings. Then, again, that whistle of a train afar off, it must be coming now, his watch said 1227. What would, uh, would that uh, train never get here? If only his knees and hands would not travel so at times. Page 496, those five birds winging to get, uh, toward that patch of trees over there below that hill, what has that got to do? Alert and observing, but those five birds winging toward that patch of trees over there below that hill. Now, again I come to the role of nature. This is not uh, the, the forgiving and all embracing nature of William Wordsworth. Okay, this is nature that is red in tooth and claw. You must have also for naturalists, nature is always unforgiving, always dark and therefore, winged birds, clawing birds, screeching and then at one point when Roberta is drowned, you feel, you hear all those kinds of birds screeching and screaming, exactly. Do you remember which page that is, that is on? Okay, page 511. Also on page 515, Roberta, when she is drowning, help, help, oh my God, I am drowning, I am drowning, help, oh my God, her last few words, Clyde, Clyde and then the voice at his ear. But this, this is not uh, that which you have been thinking and wishing for this while. You in your great need and behold, for despite your fear, your cowardice, 
this this has been done for you an accident an accident an unintentional blow on your part is now saving you the labor of what you sought and yet did not have the courage to do he is having a monologue with himself a conversation with himself while she is shrieking for help while as roberta drowns what is clyde saying to himself but isn't this what you wanted okay and you didn't even push her it was an accident the boat just capsized uh, capsized both of us uh, uh, sank um, she couldn't swim i can i don't have to save her but i didn't kill her right in his mind he is giving uh, justifying his action and that's what you wanted that's the reason i came here for also remember the way he got their names falsely registered at the lodge okay all these things later on go against him so technically he is not a murder murderer at least in his mind but the fact that how uh, do you remember how he gets uh, finally the law gets him because there is a fight to save him he has his own uh, um, supporters there is a lawyer and his assistant who is very shrewd so they try to do whatever they can to do but how how does he get trapped yes he confesses to a priest that the idea of killing roberta was always there and the priest goes out and says yes actually he did want to and the sin is not whether he say, uh, yeah whether he actually pushed her or not yeah his intention got convicted yes you see even to plot or to think about somebody's or to wish for someone's death is a moral sin okay and the fact that he morally he has committed and that's so he, what he gets punished for not the actual act of murder <coughs> but for the moral so it's all if the thought strikes you that is a bigger sin than or that's as grave a sin as killing a person that's the point please read the novel you will get the entire idea elia you might save her but again you might not i mean who is there to tell you for see how she strikes about she is stunned she herself is unable to save herself and by her own erratic terror if you draw near her now may bring about your own death also but you desire to live and her living will make your life not worthwhile from now on rest but a moment a fraction of a minute wait wait ignore the pity of that appeal and then and then but there behold it is over she is sinking now you will never never see her alive any more ever and there is your own hat upon the water as you wished and upon the boat clinging to that rowlock a whale belonging to her leave it will it not not show that this was an in, this was an accident and apart from that nothing a few ripples the peace and solemnity of this wondrous scene and then once more the voice of that weird contemptuous mocking lonely bird so nature okay so nature cannot be a partner in crime nature has its own way of resolving these things so kit 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 kya ka kit 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 and that's the so this is not your uh, uh, bird from a wordsworth poem okay is a is it's almost like uh, um, you know a very judgmental kind nature judging him okay and nature is never beautiful in reason if you read that if you read the novel it's always dark slimy waters deep shallow dirt pond okay all those things that's part of the yes gayatri yes tell me comments all right and then we come to the end of uh, book 2 book 3 is more about how the plot but again it's only a writer like dreiser who could have devoted at least you know 25% of the book of the novel entirely to the trial because it's not a murder mystery after all we know who did it and how he did it okay but now the entire thing is about what society d- does to such kind of people and the social order how it is I, again look at the way we have been talking about constructing the social hierarchies 
ok. The social all the topmost social in the institutes that come into play now, families, church, parents, ok, Roberta's pa parents, they also become extreme, suddenly they acquire lot of importance, ok. Why? This family that has been living in absolute oblivion, dirt poor family, they are given lot of, they are suddenly into limelight, given lot of attention. And why? Why are we uh, told that this, uh, this kind of an inc incident acquires so much of uh, media and uh, public attention? Griffith's position, but also the prosecution lawyer Mason, yeah, we are later told that he is going to fight for some kind of an, the district as attorney, he is going to soon run for some kind of a public election, public office, okay. And he needs votes from these semi-literate and again that idea is brought about that a semi-literate public and he's, he says, who are these, who are the jury members here? shopkeepers, poor farmers, middle class housewives who read all these dime uh, newspapers and dime novels, ok. So, these are the papers who are pa people who are part of the jury, you know the jury system. So, 12 people, 12 members of the jury, but who are these people? Are they highly literate, educated? No, very common people and then he names them, he gives you the, na uh, the their professions, housewives who read dime novels. You know, you know what are dime novels? Yes, Ashmita, what is a dime novel? Those cheap, uh, cheaply available, cheaply cheaply available adventurous, romantic so, dramas, yeah. ok. So, they do not have that intellectual grasp to look at both sides of the story. They're, these are the kinds of people who will automatically be sympathetic towards Roberta and if you place Titus Aldon and his miserable looking family there, naturally the attention will go and Mason will come up as a as a hero of this kind of community and that is the community that is going to vote for him. Okay. So, no one is good and that is what we have been talking about the naturalistic characters. The naturalistic characters are never sympathetic, yeah, they have Mankind is be beyond redemption, everyone works with an ulterior motive. The judge who defend, the defense lawyer, uh, sorry not the judge, the lawyer who tries to defend Clyde Griffiths, he, we are told that he is highly educated, he comes from a very wealthy family, once upon a time he had been in a similar situation, uh, he got a girl in trouble, the family had money and the resources and therefore, they could, yeah, yeah, so they could uh, get away with it, she was, the fetus was aborted and therefore, he, he sympathizes with Clyde. So, even Clyde has some redeeming features, he has a supporter, ok. The fact that Clyde is now repenting, he feels bad, sorry for himself, again another naturalistic theory which is ab always about struggle between the human and the beast within, the animal within and the human within. In naturalistic no works, it is always the beast that takes over. Nature, role of nature, we have already discussed. Setting, generally uh, all the naturalistic novels are city based, urban in nature. Dreiser is a city's author writer. If you want to uh, read somebody, if you, Anyone who is interested in cityscapes, urban scapes, okay, Dreiser is one of the foremost novelists of the city, the way he paints city life, city culture. Morally ambiguous mindscapes and landscapes. And now coming back to the title, so why is it not an individual tra tragedy and why is it, it, why is it an American tragedy, a national tragedy? It is an, an indictment of the entire American society and the American dream that everyone has every 
right and opportunity to come up in life. And this is something that somehow messes up with most people. Okay. Any comments or any, uh, because we, uh, you, I would urge you that you finish book 3 on your own. It is very richly detailed. The court, round, court room trial and drama is really very uh, well detailed. Okay. And the way the investigation, the prosecution, the defense, the dialogue, the, you know, the turmoil that Clyde Griffiths goes through and all these things. And at the end, what emerges is, I mean, again, the same basic idea is repeated that human beings are beyond redemption. Okay. This is the fate. 